Have you ever wanted to achieve a really cool fireplace effect with just some LEDs, resistors, and your Arduino? If so, then I'll show you how in this video. In order to achieve a fireplace effect, the first thing we'll need is a circuit like this one. We have five total LEDs, three yellows and two reds, and they're staggered so that we have yellow, red, yellow, red, yellow. You could use more LEDs, or you could even use just three LEDs, but the more you use, generally, the better overall effect you'll get. All that we've done is connected each of the cathodes of these LEDs to the ground rail on this side of the board, and I have a wire running from that ground rail over to the one on the other side of the board connected to the Arduino's ground through this wire. I have five 330 ohm resistors and each of these wires is connected to one of the Arduino's pins that it has innately pulse width modulation capabilities. The pins I've used are three digital pins 3, 5, 6, 9, and 10 and they all have the little squiggly beside them for pulse width modulation and that gives us the ability to easily just analog write a random value to each of these LEDs. That being said, let's look at the code. With our circuit built, we can now look at two different ways to code this sort of fireplace effect. We'll look at a sort of simple beginner level code and then we'll look at another example of a more intermediate way to code it. To look at the simple, just beginner level code, is we start out with declaring some global variables. We declare a variable for each of our pins that our LEDs are connected to. Remember, these are all pulse width modulation pins. You can use non-pulse width pins and generate a pulse width modulated signal on them, but that's a little more complicated. We don't need to worry about that right now. So just pick whichever pins have the little squiggly pulse width modulated symbol beside them, and you could use any of those for this. You can use more than five or less than five, whatever you'd like to do. And with our global variables, we given that our pin numbers will not change throughout the code, we can declare them as constant. And it, they could all be of the integer type. They could just as well be all of the byte type if you want to save a little memory. I've just named them as straightforward as possible, LEDs 1 through 5. That's all the global variables we need. Then in setup, we declare all of their pin modes. Just like we're taught starting out, we set all of the LED variables to output or all the LED pins to output. Then things become a little more interesting. We use this inbuilt function called random seed. It seeds the random number generator in the Arduino. And what does that mean? That means that it gives it a starting point. How do we get that starting point? You could just put a number in here. But instead, we will start by just sampling or reading analog pin 2, which we have nothing connected to. Always keep in mind, if you are going to use an analog pin to seed the random number generator, you don't want it connected to anything. You want it floating. We actually, this is a time when noise on the pin or a floating pin is actually a good thing. And what happens is when the Arduino reaches setup, it reads whatever noise is on analog pin 2. And it uses that as a starting point when we later call this random function. And so every time if you put this random seed function in void setup, you will start out with a truly random floating value. And that's kind of nice. Every time you restart or push restart on the Arduino, you'll get a slightly different effect. Like your fire, your LED fireplace will flicker in a slightly different pattern every time you push restart or start it up the next time. However, you could just as well put this function right under void loop. And then what that would mean is every time through void loop, every time it rings back around, it would sample the noise on analog pin 2 and use that as its random starting point. So every time through the loop, you'd get a new reference or starting point for the random functions that are called inside void loop, which is kind of interesting. They Putting it here creates a consistent effect. It's kind of like over and over again. Although it looks random, it's actually, it's random up until the point that it's we exit setup. Then this will be our reference value that all the calls to the random functions will use to generate their random effect. But and if you put it at the top of a void loop, it's going to sample that noise 
every time through the loop and create an even more randomized look to the LEDs, you know, blinking on and off or dimming and brightening on and off if you wanted to be more technical about it with analog right. Either way will work. Experiment with it. See what you what looks best for you. I tend to prefer it to be in the bottom of setup. Some people would rather it probably be in the top of void loop right here. Either way will work. And once we hit void loop, what are we doing? We are writing to LED1 a random number value. This random function will pick a number, given that we've put 255 in here. Remember, analog write can't go any higher than 254, 255. And so what this will do is it will pick a number somewhere between 0 and 254. It'll be one less than whatever the number is that you've entered inside the random function as its parameter. So this will be a value from 0 to 254. That's what it will return. And then we will write that value to the first LED. Then we'll move to the second LED, perform the exact same thing. This will pick another random number somewhere between 0 and 254. This could have been 200. This might be 85. Then we repeat the same procedure with the LED 3. Down to 4, this could be 75. Down to 5, this could be 254. And then we delay. How long? Well, some amount of time in milliseconds from 0 milliseconds to 99 milliseconds. You can play with this number. I found that 100 going from 0 to 99 creates a pretty decent effect, but you could go a little smaller number and the flickering will be a little faster. You go a slightly larger number and it will be a little slower. It just depends on how kind of aggressive you want the flickering or the fading in and out to be with delay and then we reach the bottom of the loop function and that's all there is to it so every time through the loop we will be writing some random number which will be different it'll be somewhere between 0 and 254 for this number then it'll be 0 to 254 for this number somewhere in between that range and that will change most every time we pass through the loop so we'll be writing a slightly different number value to the LEDs every time we make a circuit through the loop and that's kind of cool. That's all there is to the simple code to generate the LED fireplace effect. I'll scroll back up so people could pause the screen and type it in their Arduino if they want to. And then there's the loop. But what if we wanted to be a little fancier? What if we wanted to do this in a way that didn't require us having to manually type all of this all these and set all these pin modes manually we can do that using this piece of code we'll start out by declaring a constant integer type variable named num of leds which is just the total number of leds we have in our case it's five if you did it with three you would need to change this five to a three if you did it with 15 you'd need to change it to 15. then we move into declaring an array of led pins and how does this array work how many elements will it have well it'll have the same number of elements as the number of our leds namely five you, this isn't really necessary to do this because in the C language you could leave this empty and it's smart enough to count the amount of elements you have and it would apply it here. But it's useful to have that num number of LEDs variable when we get to the for loop stepping through it. So since we already have it, why not go ahead and put it in here in the slot for the element count. It's just it's easy enough to do. And inside the curly brackets, we'll have our actual LED pin numbers. And in a sense, this is treating them in a more general manner than assigning them a particular variable name. We can still access them just like we could with a particular variable name by what's known as their index, rather than some specific name like LED1, LED2, etc. Instead of that, we will do their index number. And arrays index by or starting with zero. They're what's known as zero indexed in the C language. Pin three is going to have an index value of zero. Pin five will have an index value of one. Pin six will have an index value of two. Pin nine will have an index value of three. Pin ten will have an index value of four. 
So it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And that's how we'll have to refer to them in our for loop structure when we're stepping through. We have, there is five elements, but there's zero indexed elements given that we're using an array. How does that work out? We can move to setup and it'll start to make more sense. That in setup, instead of going pin mode LED1 is output, pin mode LED2, and instead of having to do that manual entry, we can just use a for loop to step through each element in the array via its index number. Remember, it starts with zero. So the first thing we do in our for loop is we create an index variable, int i. Just keep it simple. And we'll set i to zero initially. Namely, we want to start with the first element in the array. And we're indexing it by zero. So we'll start with pin three. Then we'll ask, is zero less than or equal to the number of LEDs minus one? Well, it will be. Zero is clearly going to be less than the number of LEDs minus one because the number of LEDs minus one is going to be equal to, well, four. So zero is less than or equal to four. And that means what do we do? We set Z, the LED pin that is in the index position of zero to its output mode. Then, given this I plus plus at the tail end of the four control structure, and that means that after we have done whatever's inside the for loop, we increment the value of i by 1. We'll hit the bottom of the for loop. Following this increment, we'll have i's equal to 1. The test will apply again. Is 1 less than or equal to 4? Yes, it is. So set whatever LED pin is at the 1 index position to output mode. Then increment your index variable by one, so it'll be two. We hit the bottom of the for loop, i is equal to two now. Is two less than or equal to four? Yes, it is. So set the LED pin that's in the two index position, namely LED pin six, to output mode, increment the index by one, roll back around, that means our index will now be three. Is three less than or equal to four? Yes. So we will set whatever LED pin is in the three index marker inside our array, which will be pin nine, to its output mode. Hit the bottom of the for loop. We increment before we get out of the for loop, which means now we have i is equal to four. So is four less than or equal to four? Yes, it is. Well, set whatever LED pin is in the index four position, which happens to be 10, LED pin 10 in this case, the output mode, increment by one. We hit the bottom of the for loop, we go up, now it's i is equal to five. Well, is five less than or equal to four? No, it's greater than four. For loop stops, exits, we drop down to random seed. And this is the exact same random seed function call that we saw in the simpler code. We will start out and set up every time restart is pushed on the Arduino or you plug power back into it, this random seed function will sample the noise that's on analog pin 2 and use that as its starting point. But you could just as well as mentioned with the simple code you could put this function call under void loop and you will get a random starting point every time through the loop the effect will look different. It's just a matter of preference. You can put this function call here or here. Either way, that being said, once we enter the for loop, how are we going to write our random numbers to our LED pins? We're going to do it in the exact same manner that we set them to the output mode. Namely, we'll start doing, we'll scroll through this array via the index numbers in the array. We'll say, okay, set our index number to zero. And is zero less than or equal to, remember this is four, five equal is assigned to the number of LEDs, five minus one is four, so it'll be less than, zero will be less than four, which will kick it down into the inside of the for loop, and it'll say, well, analog right, a random number between zero and 254 to whatever LED pin happens to be at the zero index position. 
then increment our index number by one before exiting the for loop. It'll exit. At this point, i will be equal to one. Well, one is going to be less than or equal to four. In turn, passing the for loop, meaning that we will analog write a random number between zero and 254 to whatever LED pin is in the one index position in our array. In our case, it'll be pin five, LED pin five. That'll scroll back through, on through all the elements in the array until it reaches four, and then four will be less, will be equal to four. So it'll write a random number between zero, 254, to the whatever LED pin is in the fourth index position, which in our case will be 10. It'll write that random number to it, increment by one, before it exits the for loop, then it starts back over at the for loop, i is equal to five. Well, five is not less than or equal to the number of LEDs, so the for loop will fail, it'll stop, then we drop down into delay, just like in the simple code, and it will say delay for how long? For some amount of milliseconds, zero to 99. Hits the bottom of, after it applies that delay, it reaches the bottom of the loop, then starts all back over, over and over and over, doing the same thing again and again. And given that this will be a new call to random every time, we'll get exactly the same effect. That's all there is to the fancier piece of code. It does the exact same thing as the simpler piece of code. It just uses a little more sophisticated control structures and variable structures. Using an array as a more sophisticated variable structure and using a for loop to step through an array to assign pin modes or to analog write to those elements in the array. That's a little fancier. But notice it'll fit all on one page basically. It's nice, it's concise, it works every time. The only thing you have to keep in mind is that array elements are zero indexed, meaning that the count starts with zero in them. And if you have used a variable that is assigned the actual value of the number of pins, you'll have to subtract one from it when you're doing your count. And to get all of the count, you'll need to go less than or equal to inside the for loop. Just think about it. And if there's any questions or if folks would like me to do a video on arrays and how they're zero indexed and how you access elements in the arrays, just let me know in the comments. I'll be more than happy to do so. But whichever of these two pieces of code you have preferred, go ahead and upload them to the Arduino and we'll see what it looks like. With our code uploaded, we should have an effect that looks like this. You can enhance the effect by adding just a paper or cylinder, and you can also turn out the lights. And you get a pretty cool fireplace or candle effect. You have the flickering just like a flames behind that paper cylinder. And you could of course add mirrors to this to increase its effect, but you really do want to have a white reflective style surface or some sort of paper. The thinner the paper, the better. But if it's too thin, you'll start to see the individual LEDs coming through. Either way you want to do it, it's a cool effect. And I hope this video has been helpful. If so, please consider clicking like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.